Hello YouTube, HPZ here today and uh, as you've probably seen from the title, everyone is ranting and raving about the NES Mini. It's a great console. I really wanted to get one for myself. But unfortunately, no one has it in stock. Take a lot, I tried to get in when they were still stock, but for some reason if you try and order from mobile, it, it doesn't confirm my payment. So the payment was waiting and they actually cancelled my order by the time I got home to place it because of the stock quantities. So I did place it again afterwards and it, it's on back order. I'm probably getting one sometime in December if there's enough units. Okay, but there's a big shortage. Nintendo likes doing this. When the new console from Nintendo comes out, expect a shortage. I mean, sit the night before and hit F5 until you see it so that you can buy it. Don't, don't, don't be like me. <laughs> Okay, so there are a few alternatives that you can use. Okay, the first one I'm going to talk about, and this is the one I recommend everyone to get involved with, because this is the best one, uh, not only for the environment, but it's the best one for the hobby. It's the best one that you can actually do for yourself, because in my opinion, it still gives me the best results. And that is, go out, find an Xbox Classic, the original Xbox. Get one of those. Get an ID hard drive, you can find them quite easily, all computers. Get an 80 gig to 100 gig hard drive and load coin ops. You will have the best emulation platform out there with the best menu system. Nothing touches it. And absolutely nothing, not even the Raspberry Pis and things. But here's a problem with it not everyone can find them. Uh, not all of the countries have a huge availability of Xbox uh, original consoles. Uh, South Africa, especially, I'm one of the exceptions that of people that have a lot of them because I used to deal with them a lot I know how to source them and track them and get them so I would not recommend you go down that route if you can't find it so don't go out of your way and pay a hundred dollars for an Xbox to import one from America there are all other alternatives the second way to do it is grab a Wii you can play all the games on Wii you can hack the Wii there are remotes that you can get online and the best thing of all is that NES mini remote will plug into a Wii mode sorted you can get a Wii for 300 Rand, <laughs> a full Wii, working. And just plug the converter and it'll cost you $9 or whatever for that, uh, just the remote, for the NES Classic. And just plug it into a Wii mode, you, you're, you're done. <laughs> uh, so 300 Rand, that, that's, if you translate it, uh, that's going to be about $170. Oh, no, sorry, not hundred, $17. And you're done. The Wii is a phenomenally good choice. I'll probably do another video just to demonstrate this because it's it's so good. So, those two aside, you want to do something on a new device. You want to buy new equipment. You don't want to go out and, and buy a second-hand thing or in your country, you don't get Xboxes. Wiis are too expensive. So, what do you do? If you remember, I did an unboxing of this little thing. This is the Orange Pi Lite. You can see it has a little Wi Fi antenna at the side. It has two USB ports. It's got HDMI. It's got a power adapter. Don't mistake the USB for power, it's not. And it has a USB on the go and a micro SD card. I mean, you can expand this. It has a power switch as well at the side, but yeah. Sure, this doesn't look as good as NES Mini, but I'm sure you can freely print something. There's a lot of maker spaces all around the world, so Africa has one. I'm going to try and do one. Um, I just need to teach myself how to 3D model in it. I have technical drawing at school, so I'm sure how difficult can it be? You know, it's three, eight, three planes, you know, and, and, and you're done. You just have to learn the software. So... A lot of you are probably screaming at the top of your voices, no, get a Raspberry Pi free, get a Raspberry Pi free, it's a better system, it's faster. It is, but it doesn't compare because $60 is what you pay for an NES Mini. Sure, it only plays NES games and Raspberry Pi will play a lot more, but it's $60. Your alternatives need to actually match that price group. And you're not going to do that if you buy a Pi Free. A Pi Free is going to cost you $35 just for the Pi Free. You need to buy an enclosure, a power supply store. And both of those things will cost more. So probably by the time you add an enclosure and a power supply, you're looking at about $50. Uh, this excludes import tax if you're abroad like me. Okay, It excludes the actual uh, 
tax that you pay in the United States, because I, I never knew that you guys used to still pay tax on us, but you still pay tax. So by the end of it all, okay, it'll cost you quite a bit more than $60, because you still need to get controllers, you still need to get a micro SD, and you have to get everything just to power it up still. So it's a lot more expensive. This, okay, now there's two models of this. There's the Orange Pi Light, and then there's the Orange Pi 1. The Light has a Wi-Fi connection. I got this for something else. That's why I got this version. The Orange Pi 1 has an Ethernet adapter. Now, the Ethernet one is actually much faster uh, over a network than the Wi-Fi. The Wi-Fi, I would say this is about 54 megabits per second. It's not great. It doesn't have good signal. Get the other one. You'll be better off for it. Now, when you get it online, there's lots of bundles and you're going to get flooded by them. The one you want is the bundle that's the Orange Pi one itself. It's the case. Okay, and it's the power supply. It's very important you get the power supply because they use their own little cord there. It's different to the one that you normally get. So get one of these. And get the, the actual bundle for that. The Orange Power one worked out, I think, to $25, including shipping, if you take that one. This one worked out to $28, including shipping. Now, this is shipping anywhere in the world, if you get it from AliExpress. That means you don't have to worry about getting it to you. You don't have to worry about getting it from RS Electronics, which have put up a 200% markup. Just go have a look at their site. It's very close to that, well, very close to 100% markup that they put on the uh, Raspberry Pis and you will have the, the first part of the puzzle now you're going to need two things locally the first thing that you're going to need is a micro SD card and a reader now you can get these in a bundle where you have the reader and the micro SD card together and uh, you're looking at about 100 Rand so that's for an 8 gigabytes uh, one. Uh, 32 gig is what I recommend. So just double it for the 32 gig. That's about the price difference. So it's 100 Rand. You're looking at about $7 for one of those. Less if you're in the United States. In the US, these things cost pennies. So get yourself one of those. You probably already have a keyboard and a mouse at home, uh, at home somewhere, a USB one. Because how are you watching this video? You've got a computer somewhere. So with those, you can already plug it into the USB. You can already program this. So that's the second thing done. So technically, you can already game at that stage because you can use the keyboard. It'll work 100%. You can map the keys. It'll work. But what's the fun in that? You're going to need a controller. Okay, you can get the controllers online as well. This one cost me $11. And that's because I wanted to use this as a media remote. Okay, and this will work great for retro gaming as well. It has these directional things. The reach is a bit long to do it. So don't expect to play Mortal Kombat on here or Street Fighter. But it will work. So you put one of these in. You're already sorted. You've spent, what's it? Uh, let's make this $30. You spend seven dollars. Let's make that ten. That's forty dollars, and eleven dollars. That's fifty odd dollars, and some pocket change. You sort it. You can game, but most likely you've got a preferred USB controller already. You've got a controller that you love. So any USB controller. This one is USB. This actually is my daily driver. I've got this hooked up onto my Raspberry Pi 2 in the living room. And it's perfect because uh, the mapping works perfectly for PlayStation. Okay, for snares, you've got your four buttons and two shoulder buttons. For Sega, you've got the three buttons there. Or you can have a six-button controller if you're fighting uh, fighting games. I think it was only Street Fighter who used those. Very few games actually use the six-button. But... There you go, everything you need, one controller, you're done.
I actually want to use one of these. This is a spare one I've got because like I said, that's my daily driver. I'm going to use this. Once again, USB. It'll work. That's all good and great. So I've already got these, but you can probably buy them as well because if you're a gamer, you'll either already have them or you can go out and buy them. You'll already have the Xbox controller. They work as well with the little receiver. Or you've got the wired one. They work as well. All of them work already. It's just a no-fuss solution. But let's say you want to spend over that $60 gap. There's still a little bit of money left. So what you're going to do is you're going to go online. Now this might not show up nicely on the screen, so I'm experimenting here a little bit. and You're my guinea pig today. And you're going to go to AliExpress and you're going to do a search for 8-bit do. There we go. Is that the right way? There we go. Come on, flip over. Oh. <laughs> Come on, orientate yourself properly. Anyway, you're going to do a search for 8-bit do. And 8-bit do makes make these wireless Bluetooth controllers. So you're going to need a Bluetooth module. Okay, a Bluetooth module will set you back $2. And just look at the amazing controllers you can get for this. I mean, there's Famicom ones, there's SNES ones, and they're all wireless, all rechargeable. That's the hybrid one. It's like a NES one mixed with a PlayStation controller. It has two uh, thumbsticks and L and R and everything. So that's perfect for emulation. And they're cheap. They're $20 to $30. Here's one that looks exactly like a Famicom a controller. I would love one of those. And they work. You just work them over Bluetooth. If you want, if you're really desperate and you just want to get the Bluetooth, you can use a Wii remote. That also works on here. Yeah. It, it's flexible. So that's everything that you're going to need to set this up. So I'm probably going to split this video into two parts. I'm going to do it, well, three parts. I'm going to split it into what you need to set it up what you need to configure it and then what you actually need to uh, play it uh, well and how it plays and give you a demonstration of it but that's the first part that that's just the setup stuff that you're done the setup is easy on this and this will give you NES it'll give you SNES it'll give you Sega Genesis Master System Game Boy Game Boy Advance PlayStation even works on here. I don't know how good it is. I, I still need to load up mine and test it because I was using mine for Media Center most of the time. But I'm sure it'll run fine. This is only slightly slower than the Pi 2. And the Pi 2 plays most of those. So there are alternatives to a Famicom Mini. And I'll show you this one now while we wait for, for mine to arrive and the hackers to get into it. Because they'll Nintendo even release the source code for the kernel. So most likely someone's going to get into there and uh, add more games, <laughs> add your collection to it. I mean, it's a waste of art. It's a dual core ARM processor, and it's all winner. It's actually the same processor as what what's used in here. So if, if you guys want to really argue about the emulation quality, hardware platform's the same. This is a except this is the quad core version, faster, but they're almost identical. Sure. The emulator is, is programmed by people. It's not programmed by Nintendo. But let's be honest, for anyone that's played any of the virtual console games on the NES or oh, on the Wii or Wii U, you know that the color palettes suck for the Nintendo emulators. This doesn't, this is a bit better. So, yeah, that, that's all from me on this video. I'll see you in the next video where I actually set things up. Well, yeah, set things up, copy the ROMs over, etc. I don't know how am I going to do that because it's going to be quite difficult, but I will sort it. Anyway, cheers, HPZ are signing off. If you guys want to, please comment, rate, and subscribe.